After the desolation of the Manali Leh High Road, the Valley of the Indus was like an oasis in the desert. A study in colors and contrasts. A cerulean blue sky against a freshly whitewashed Chortan. Green trees and sharply etched shadows. The drive is exhilarating. Imagine zipping at 12,000 feet at almost 80 kilometers an hour. That's how good the roads here can be. Arrow straight for miles on end. But most of all, it's seeing people again against the backdrop of an ancient culture that tells us we've arrived. The only habitation of any consequence is the capital, Leh, a town that has acquired its sprawl over a thousand years due to its position on the Central Asian trade route from Amritsar to Kashgar. Overlooking the town and dominating it is the castle of the Ladakh kings. Carvings. Wow. These must be the Shea rock carvings. Achha. Achha. I think they date back to the first or second century AD. Really that old, huh? Yeah, that old. To the time of Kanishka. Mankind's been around for a while in Ladakh. And if we get further up to Murdek, mm -hmm. there's a huge rock cut Buddha there. Okay. That should be interesting as well. Yeah, one should go there too. As it turns out, we are lucky to be able to see these. A few years ago, a mini Bamiyan was sought to be enacted here for the stated purpose of widening the road. Holes were drilled for the dynamite and the only reason the fuses remained unlit was the resistance of the local villagers. Ladakh is the rift valley of the Indus, the continental divide where Eurasia collided with the then island Indian continent almost a hundred million years ago. An ancient land indeed. Little has changed here over the millennia. The people seem to live and farm pretty much the same way they would have for thousands of years, tending their flocks off, as Vipul informs me, the pashmina, the finest fleece known to mankind. Vipul, I always associated pashmina with Kashmir. Yeah, that's where the wool is spun into fine fabric. Okay. But the raw material comes from here. Hmm. You know, evolution has endowed the sheep here with the capacity to withstand very low temperatures. Okay. So is this their most tradable commodity? Yeah, this and salt. Salt? Salt. Historically, the salt trade has been very big here. Mm -hmm. You know, the region has very large salt lakes mm -hmm. which serve as never-ending supply. To the north of the Indus lies the Pangong, like an inland sea. While many streams empty into the Pangong, the water has only one escape, evaporation, thus making the waters of the lake salty. In winter, the Pangong freezes over. They say you can drive a truck on it, a sight one can only imagine. The temperature now falls to a bone-chilling minus 35 degrees.
Ladakh is famous the world over for its Buddhist monasteries, vibrant centers of religion and philosophy, even in this 21st century. Probably the largest of these is the Gompa of Tikse, a dozen odd kilometers from Leh. The 15th century, when Tikse was built, were unsettled times and monasteries were easy targets. So to deter would-be troublemakers, they started sighting them on top of hills. I guess the logic was that anybody who made it up these few hundred steps would be in no shape to cause any trouble. Inside, the main prayer hall is teeming with activity. We are lucky. The monks are making a sand mandala for a major ceremony to be held a few days hence. One of the most artistic and unique expressions of Tantric Buddhism, sand mandalas are 2D representations of sacred spaces and their resident deities. Using coloured sand, traditionally made by crushing different coloured rocks, the monks follow a strictly prescribed format for the different mandalas. The metal funnels, called chakpur, are rhythmically stroked to make the sand flow like a liquid. At its most basic, the mandala represents the impermanence of all life through its own short life. A few days, this elaborate creation will be swept away the sands consigned to the nearby river. Tikse is a storehouse of more permanent art forms as well. Wall paintings that date back to the 15th century, when the monastery was built. So Ravi, this here is the Buddha's pantheon. Okay, this one this, of course is Buddha. This is the Buddha of course. Yeah. This is Manjushri. All right. If we move ahead, this is uh, this is the Maitre Buddha, okay. the future Buddha. That, of course, you recognize him, mm. Padmasambhava, yes. founder of Tibetan Buddhism. Mm. And this here is Songkhapa. He is the founder of the Gelugpa Order, okay. which is headed by the Dalai Lama. All right. You recognize the the hat. caps, yeah, yeah, the hat. Sorry. The centerpiece of the monastery is this huge two-storey statue of the seated Maitre Buddha, the Buddha of the future. And then onto the monastery rooftop for a fantastic view of the Indus Valley spread out below. Vipul, hmm? I've had enough of the sun, hmm. now I want some action, man. Action? Some action, yeah. What kind of action? Well, suggest something, man. How about some local sport? I hear they have some polo here. Is it? Yeah. But polo, you need to know horse riding, hmm. you know. I really don't know anything about horse riding, friend. Well, what do you suggest? Well, let me see. You know, yesterday I was at this Tibetan market, the uh -huh. old Tibetan market, uh -huh. and there in the corner they had this little competition going. What sort of competition? Bow and arrows, man. Archery. Archery, friend. Oh. And there was music and there was dancing, and I thought I would love to participate in that. Yeah, sounds fascinating. Yeah. 
I've heard a lot about Ladakhi archery. Let's check it out today. Yeah. Yeah. Not check it out. Let's <laughs> compete, friend. Yes. Yeah. Let's compete. Ladakhis are really open-hearted people. <laughs> Vipul and me are inducted into different sides and kitted out. This is more than just a sport, so traditional attire is a must. Both teams settle down to some drinking, egged on by the girls from the other side. The aim being, I guess, to give your side an advantage by making the others tipsy. The whole affair has a traditionally prescribed format, so after a team sing-along, arrows are distributed and the match is on. The target is a white stone set at some 40 feet distance. It's not as easy as it looked at first sight. The hit is not accepted since the stone had already partially broken. So with the target replaced, the match resumes. This time it's a clear win for Vipul's team. Stop, stop, stop. What, what? This sign looks interesting. Yeah, back up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It says magnetic hill. The phenomenon that defies gravity. Is it? Park your vehicle in the box marked with white paint on road. Do you see oh. any white box? Yeah. Oh, th this is it. Oh. So we just parked this car, car on, on the box. Just park and, it here. Okay, and now we parked it. No, it says park the vehicle on the box. I parked it on the box. No, I mean you're obviously you're driving. You're I'm not driving. My I can I I shut the engine, man. Here you are. You can see it still move and it's still picking up speed, man. You sure you parked the car then? I parked and I'm now shut off the engine. It's moving. It's moving. Oh my it's, God. We're going uphill, and it's going at quite a pace. So let's try this in reverse. Yeah. So, so this is the box in front. Yeah. So park park. Vehicle. Let's just yeah. park it again. On the box. On the white box. Let's see box. if it happens in reverse. You want to check it in reverse? Yeah, let's see if it happens. Okay, now I'm going to shut the engine. Okay, my engine shut. 
and we are going backwards. We are going backwards, man. Ooh. Do you think the magnet's below this thing? I don't know, man. Where could it be? Could be anywhere. It could be the hill up I front. Mean, it doesn't explain anything. It, it could be the hill up front, just. Besides being the happy hunting ground for the adventurous, Ladakh is also one of the greatest repositories of Buddhist art in the entire Himalayas. A museum not only of geology, but of the finest in artistic expression. We are headed to the thousand-year-old Gompa of Alchi, where Vipul has promised me a treat. Vipul? Yeah. This monastery looks very different to me. First of all, it looks older. And then secondly, it's not built around the same way like uh, like Key was or... Yeah. In fact, it is the oldest. It Achha. dates back to the 10th century. Okay. And that's before the fortress style of monastery building came into vogue. Achha. In fact, it's built on an ancient Indian mandala pattern. Achha. You remember Tabo in Spiti? Of course, yeah. Yeah. So like Tabo, this is a choskhar or a doctrinal enclave. Okay. From where the dharma can spread. Okay. Yeah. It's not, it, you're right, it's different from other monasteries. Look at this. Yeah, such intricate carving, yeah. This doorway to the Dukhang yeah. is one of the finest examples of the work of ancient Kashmiri master craftsmen. The exquisite works of master Kashmiri painters and wood carvers that have long since vanished from Kashmir but are enshrined like jewels here. Some of the most beautiful murals of the Kashmiri school are here in Alchi. This is Vasudhara, seen here in an abundance of detail. Scenes from the life of the Buddha. Looking at these, it is easy to see how the 11th century the influences of the Ajanta cave paintings had spread as far north as Ladakh and even beyond. Sitting on a swan is Maha Saraswati, the goddess of learning, holding aloft the Vajra. On the robe of this Bodhisattva figure are scenes from a battle that took place a thousand years ago. In fact, every square inch of every interior surface in Alchi is covered with paintings, including thousands of Buddha panels. My friend was right. This was indeed a treat. adventure are you mapping now? Hmm. You really want to know? Yeah. Well, once upon a time, hmm. traders with their caravans and wares trudged along this route. Mm -hmm. The Central Asian trade route to Yarkand and beyond. Mm -hmm. A map, a flight of the imagination, mm -hmm. and one can be in their place. The sheer climb from Leh to the 18,000 foot high Khadungla Pass. Even the well acclimatized find it hard going at this altitude. The wind at the pass snatching away whatever breath one has. The trek across the shifting sands of the Nubra Valley. The climb to the frighteningly iced up Sasala Pass amid the ever-present danger of yawning crevices. And then the journey through the surreal fantasy landscape of the Chipchap Valley. One would be just a dot in this awesome playground of glaciers and tortured rock. These traders were the adventurers of their time. The profits must have been very good for it to have been worth it for the traders to take such risks. Hmm. But often they paid with their lives, you know. You see this point? Just yeah. below the Karakoram Pass? Yeah. Well, that's Dolok Beg Oldi. In the Yakandi language, that means the place where Dolok Beg died. Who's Dolok Beg? 
well obviously some uh, vyakandi nobleman or rich trader i imagine a person of some consequence okay It's harvest time in the fields around Shimre Gompa and I'd much rather shoot the activity in the fields but my friend wants to see the Gompa and he usually knows what he's up to. Very dark in here, man. Yeah. What do the lamas do in the night? How do they find their way here, man? I don't think anyone moves around too much in the night here. Apparently, Shimre belongs to the Karyuppa order. one of the oldest unreformed sects of tibetan buddhism seeking inspiration from tantric deities the main prayer hall in shimre is lined with exquisite paintings which are however not old completed barely a decade ago These paintings in a classical style are embellished with relief work in gold leaf. A few hundred years down the road, this hall will be probably a cherished milestone in the art history of Ladakh. Thank you.